we would basically here's how it would go. Hey man, really nice watch. It's a really beautiful watch. Thanks. And he, well, he would reply, it's just a Rolex sports oh. watch. <laughs> yeah. It's I just do. a Rolex sports watch. Watch. Takes it off. Throws <laughs> it in the air. And then it would drop. And uh, and he thought that was the cutest party trick. It fell, it fell down a mountain and it, shattered. He just got to repair it. Exactly. He fell threw down it down a mountain. mountain. And yeah. it shattered. F***ing idiot. Watches, specifically high quality watches, even yes. Rolex, right? Watches that are built to last generations. Not a generation, but generations. Yes. Still break. And generally speaking, that breaking is not just a product of time and age and needing of service. Not just that. Right. It's misuse, right? And yes. it can be harmless misuse. So today, one of the two conversations we're having is yep. about, you know, kind of what to avoid when wearing your watch, right? Yeah. How to treat your watch uh, like... Like you hope that your grandson has it one day. We have come to the conclusion that they are indestructible and then have found out that our conclusion is wrong. Is wrong, exactly. Yes. So here's how you use your watches. What is up, watch fam? I am Christian, the curator of the Theo and Harris Vintage Watch Shop. My name is Michael, and this video is sponsored by Z-Biotics. Ah, our friends over at Z-Biotics. More yeah, on sir. them later. So today we're talking about the new Porsche Chronograph. No, I wasn't trying to hang my chain. I didn't even notice it fell out of under my collar. One which comes with a $13,000 price tag that's a little bit high for my liking. Sure. And even more than that, you have to spend about $290,000 to get one. To spend Or vice versa. Yeah, exactly. Uh, we're also talking about another swatch briefly that just came out that's really, really interesting and techy. It's the what if. It's the Bizarro Jerry episode. Exactly. And then finally, we're talking about kind of best practices in watch wearing and how to be attentive while still really wearing your watch in and not being super afraid. But being aware they're not totally invincible, even Rolex. We have seen flagrant misuse. Yes. And we have seen people that are trying to preserve their watch at all costs. Yes. And both of those people have broken their watches. Agreed. Let's do it. Porsche. Porsche. Yeah, that's Porsche. What it is. It's not Porsche. It's Porsche, Porsche design. Yes, it's Porsche design. Okay. Porsche design, I, I think, is truly one of the greatest examples uh, at its height yes. of, and even now, mm -hmm. at the moment, mm -hmm of cross-contamination in industry, right? In luxury industry. Yes. I don't know of a better example, actually. Porsche makes some of the greatest cars in the world, right? Yes. Bootsy yes. Porsche uh, invented, introduced the 911 in 1964. 1963. 1963? According to this. But then the Chronograph 1 was released in 72, but they didn't hit the market until 73. 73. <laughs> oh, that's that's actually true. I know, it's just joking. Yeah, 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 that's actually true. And I just don't know of another example of a company that produced one of the greatest cars of all time, the greatest watches of all time, or anything like it, right? right. Produced one of the greatest couches of all time, let's say like Eames or chairs, yeah. and then anything else, right? Like meaning uh, yeah. outside of the industry, outside of interior design, right? To get that level of respect on a cross design venture yes. is uh, you don't expect people to be wearing a Porsche design watch with a lot of pride because you expect it to be like I'm wearing Gucci loafers and I have Gucci cologne right. everybody's like eh, the cheaper right. mall brand Gucci cologne right. it's like okay well those are two very different products exactly right usually brands aren't able to capture both and do them both really well but the chronograph one which you can still get for you know uh, those models you know, depending on condition five to ten thousand dollars you can get a really great vintage Porsche chronograph watch mm -hmm. PVD beautiful um, and which I think is a great value watch and there's some of the greatest, you know, watches out there. Yeah. But it's not a, you know, gift store watch. Exactly. Right? Por exactly. The Porsche family did not just stamp their name on a watch to sell, you know, watches. They literally designed it from the ground up. Which is fantastic. Which is fantastic. Yeah. Okay. So now you can take over from yes. here. Let me read this to you. And then we'll get into the interesting point that got realized later in. But announced in conjunction with a very exciting new Porsche 911 S T, Porsche Design has created a brand new spin on their iconic chronograph one by way of a limited edition model that pays tribute to the new and also limited S T and the, and the 911 60th birthday. But here's the thing. If you want the watch, you need to get the car too. Both the 911 S-T, the car, and the watches are limited to just 1,963 units, and the watch is only being offered to those who will be owners of the new 992-Gen 911S-T. I think it's awesome. Car is $290,000. Right. Yes. And watch is $13,500. And some people are saying, well, this is bullshit. Why can't I just buy the watch? I have to buy a car to get a watch, right? It, That's ridiculous. $290,000. It's ridiculous. No, you're wrong. 
okay? This watch, yes, it does come with a price tag. They could have just done, you know, they could have just, you know, yeah. sold it for more money. <laughs> yeah, they, right. they could have just included it with the car, right? Right. Um, now they're shaking it down for an extra 13 grand. And who's not going to buy the watch, right? And it's a little bit expensive for that watch. But yes. I think it's a, first of all, it's a beautiful execution of the Chronograph 1. I love the configuration. Oh my wrist, it looks fantastic. It looks fantastic. Yeah. Uh, and why water it down? Why, why, why hmm. sell, why sell the watch, the very special limited edition watch, to people who don't own the car? To a guy that's buying this car, I'm not assuming anything about this guy, but it would be like he pulls up in the car, and I'm like, oh, look, look, I look, have, look, the, I watch. have the watch. He's like, okay, Golf. where's the car? Right. I'm like, I can't afford the car. Exactly. And then I get in the passenger seat, and I'm sure that. Some of these watches will make their way out of the secondary market. There isn't a of doubt course, about it. Course, Someone yeah. will flip it and, or get rid of it or what. I don't know where they're going to trade. They could trade at 10000 They could trade at 15000 I really have no idea. Um, but I think that everyone that is, that is upset that you need to buy the watch or buy the car is wrong. Um, I do think it's bullshit that people at certain nefarious dealers are told they need to spend hundreds of thousands, if not a million You're dollars watch on dealers. watch dealers. A yeah. million dollars to get certain particular vintage, red on vintage, modern Rolexes. Yeah. I, I heard of people that have spent over a million dollars to get a Rolex Rainbow Daytona. That's yeah. bullshit. When you put it in perspective of, okay, well that guy that wanted it, that guy that wanted a Daytona that could buy this car, right. Had to spend five hundred, six hundred thousand at a jewelry store to get that watch. You're right. like, oh, but he didn't even want the jewelry, the, the jewels. He wanted the car. Now, how how do you get allocated one of these? I'm sure you need to spend millions of dollars. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. But the watch, I have no problem with, right? Right. And again, the truth is, you know, I don't like the extortionate angle, but that's just human greed. It's where we go as humans. Um, but of course, who else is going to get one of these cars? I mean, what I always say is, what I always say about watches and cars and for that matter, any, anything is, I think it would be a net positive to the brand mm -hmm. to do at least a small portion on a raffle. You still oh, have to okay. pay for it, sure. of course. Yeah, of course. Uh, and, and you even have to, you even have to, you know, put a deposit down to buy a raffle ticket even. Refundable, right? Sure. But whatever. But like, you know, I think that some things should be allocated to people that don't have, that can afford the story. product, but they can't afford to spend the extra million on everything else, right? But the guy that's like, listen, I'm gonna buy a quarter of a million dollar car. No, I'm not going to spend a million dollars on other cars exactly. to get this. I have exactly a quarter of a million dollar budget for a car. <laughs> I don't think that, I, that doesn't feel like I'm poor. I, I think <laughs> yeah. I'm actually doing quite well. So what do you mean I can't? Stop making me feel poor, right? right? Exactly. Uh, so I do think that some of it should be on a raffle basis, but the other, People, I understand you, you, it's the best Porsche clients, right? Each individual Porsche dealer gets to give their best clients an allocation. I understand. That's just human nature, guys. Here's one thing I withheld from you as a comment mm -hmm. on a guy that has a buying history, which he wrote it very negatively, like this is this terrible thing that you find out after. But I wanted to get your live thoughts on it. Half of these will be sold only as the dealer will demand the watch purchase to secure your allocation. No extra money for the watch, no car. Sadly, this demand was pulled on three of my GT3 Touring friends. Yeah. What do you think? Yeah. I, I, um, let's face it, after a beautiful night of a couple, you know, beautiful cocktails, the next day, you just don't bounce back as quick. You're not, you know, you're not your full self. And yeah. I hate that. And frankly, we shouldn't uh, tolerate it. We can't afford that. Yeah, right. right? Yeah. So that's why I use Z-Biotics. Z-Biotics Pre-Alcohol Probiotic is the world's first genetically engineered probiotic that was invented by PhD scientists to tackle rough mornings after drinking. Here is how it works. When you drink, alcohol gets converted into a toxic byproduct in the gut. It's this byproduct, not dehydration, that's to blame for your rough next day. Z-Biotics produces an enzyme to break this byproduct down. It's designed to work like your liver, but in your gut where you need it the most. All you have to remember is to drink your Z-Biotics before going out, right? before having those first few drinks, which frankly is nothing, right? That's not a burden at all. And I never forget to do it. And Z-Biotics never forgets to remind me the next day uh, how grateful I am for the product because I really am that much quicker. Uh, the note, the difference, is, the difference is incredible. And frankly, for someone like me, always entertaining, always having fun. Yeah. It, it really is something that is like, for me, necessary. You need it the next day. So you can go to zbiotics.com slash Theo and Harris to save 15% off of your first order at checkout. And you can thank us later for the recommendation. Drink up, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, okay. GT3 Touring is one of the greatest Porsches you can get. So his, okay, his point okay. is saying, his point is saying, the great clients, qualified buyers, were even told to go f 
themselves buy the watch or you don't get the car. Okay. Um, as an upsell. As an upsell to make an extra couple of thousand dollars. I mean... Which is a crazy upsell. As, I think as in, that like, they the should have ratios. just raised the price of the Porsche and then included the watch. Yeah. I don't think anyone would have added an eye. Yeah. Uh, you, get a, you get a watch with the car and now the car is, you know, it's 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 not 290, it's it's 303. How much you know is it I mean? GT3? Do you know? Um, I've never looked at a new one, no. I mean, I, I know what I can get one for. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I know what I, it's like when you were the first guy to to see, to see the new Daytona because you were just shopping for white. Yeah, gold. exactly. <laughs> I can tell you what. Uh, I really want a, a, a Targa 4S, so I can get one of those for about one hundred and thirty-five thousand. Wow, uh, they're really nice. Starting at one hundred and sixty-one thousand yeah. MSRP. So during COVID, those were over three hundred thousand. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So that that. But the GT3 seems... is a brutal car to drive. Uh, really? Yeah. It, it's, yeah. It's like um, it's very uncomfortable. It's very very cool, and the exhaust notes are great, and yada yada. But it's a real sports car. I mean, the seats are sports seats. They're bucket. They're uncomfortable. Still, wow. It is bare bones. Like it's like an empty car. Wow. Yeah. It's bizarre. Wow. Yeah. So, but with that note, that's where you're like, okay, this is this is dealers being shady dealers, like. I think in, in a perfect world, again, when you're offered the car, you're not going to say no to the watch. Of course. And I don't blame a wa- I don't blame the dealer for saying, "Well, you have to buy the watch because otherwise, what the f- am I going to do with the watch? No one else can buy it. <laughs> yeah, I'm just getting stuck with the watch. That's true. If I, if I, I didn't if, think of that. That's you, very you funny. Know, yeah. A Porsche dealer is sitting on 1,963 watches. Like, is what that? is going What am I going to do with this? You know. So I understand. That's Listen, comical. You got to buy the watch. And frankly, guys. Uh, you know, I'm sorry. I just don't feel, I don't feel bad for you. Uh, I think Porsche should have included the watch and just raised the you know, MSRP. Uh, but, um, I don't know. I, I, as the dealer, I wouldn't, I would look at the, as a dealer, I would look at the client that's saying, no, I'm good on the watch. And I'd say, by the f- yeah, yeah. Well, what when you I, put it like that, it's, it's very funny. Oh, also, you're, you're hard for cash? Oh, you can't do I'll it. I'll roll it into the fucking note. Exactly. Okay? Get out of here by the watch. No yeah. question. Amendment two is 290,000. Two, uh, 290, uh, 290 to uh, 303, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. So, uh, but that's what I would do. That's, but then the question is, you know, I, I know a couple of guys that have been that have been buying, you know, Porsches, you know, uh, in the last couple of years. And, you know, the dealers are, are doing dealer adjustments as well. So they're hitting you with another 7%. Uh, 8%, 10% on top. So 290 is an extra $29,000 in dealer adjustment. Wow. And that's before tax and title. And dealer tax adjustment is what, is just, 7%? It depends you know? on where you are, right? Yeah, right. That's a lot. Listen, this is not a cheap hobby. <laughs> it's not a cheap hobby. People you always know? think Porsche, like like the car hobby is like accessible. It's I know. not. I, I won't get I won't get it. No, you didn't ask. Never mind. No, no, I'll ask him. Okay, fine. No, um, <laughs> I just refuse to have another car, right? Well, like, no. I, what I always say to you is you need an actual car. No, 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 no. Not no, a no. giant expensive Jeep that's hard to drive I and know. not an old car that's also hard to drive. I know. You behind the wheel of a nice Honda, you'd be like, this well, is no, luxury. No, I wouldn't get a Honda, but I, I would I would get like a, I would get like a really decked out uh, like Grand Cherokee. But it's no, no, Grand it's Cherokee. like that's closer, but... Just a reliable car. That no, they're reliable. Drives. They're reliable. Jeeps, really? Jeeps are reliable. I think that they're really? reliable. Jeep Grand Cherokee, I believe, is a reliable okay. car. I've never owned one. I can't I believe, say they're, from my knowledge, they're reliable. Uh, <laughs> and then the nice, the Overlands or whatever, the Summits, you know, all the really yeah. the beautiful interiors. They're nice. I mean, they still okay, drive okay. a little bit, you know, like Jeeps, uh, you know, which is a little bit, I mean, less mechanical. It's yeah, a little yeah, bit yeah. more computer kind of, which isn't my jam. Um, but I think I'm going to get a more reliable car now. I think I'm going to just get a... Uh, and an X5M, just the uh, okay. you know, BMW. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, the G wagon is killing me, man. It's just fucking <laughs> really? you know, it's just so heavy to drive. Uh, every uh-huh. it's like every time I get in the car, I'm like, <laughs> you it know, really, it's like turning. Like it the, really is. It's exhausting me. It's it's like driving the Hulk it's because like it driving. has the power, it has the speed, but yes. you're like, wow, this is really yes. Yeah. Anyways, if you like conversations like that, check out Christian's Patreon. Yeah, exactly. Check out The Zero. Absolutely. We release one podcast per week every Tuesday, perfect for your commute, a little over an hour. Once a month, we do one with Michael. And the rest of the month, whether it's a liquor one with Rolly or we're doing, you know, we're interviewing an industry, you know, legend like John Buckley or Carl Cohen, really diving into the nuts and bolts of the vintage watch and modern watch market for that matter, uh, sign up uh, for some fantastic industry insight. Yeah. Uh, it is not free, but we give out so much in credits to the Theo and Harris shop that it is free. You're getting free straps and your money's worth. So so uh, sign up. I hope to see you over there. And if you do sign up, shoot me a DM and we'll uh, have a little chat. Yeah. Um, but all right, back into the next conversation. 
I DM'd you this watch, obviously it's not a secret watch, but they just knocked it out of the park. Obviously Swatch knocked it out of the park with the Moon Swatch, and then what's next? The What If, which is when yeah. Swatch was first designing the watch, the big question was, is it circular, is it square? This is What If, instead of circular, it was, it was square. square. Yeah. And I think they just knocked it out of the box. They did a great job. It's super cool. It, it, it seems much more techy than the, uh, yes. than the, the, the natural yes. swatch. Um, but I love swatch. I just brought, I just bought a beautiful pink swatch. Here's a photo. Um, I'm such a fan. I think these watches are super cool. A little too techy for me. Yep. Um, but they're f awesome. This is like an architect. There's like a barista. This totally. Is, that's the stylized. Totally. totally. The totally. one thing I didn't know about swatches, just, I've never had a swatch. I had Timex. Always uh -huh. was Timex. How loud they are. They're so loud. Yeah. It's unbearable. It's unbelievable. It's un I can't believe they haven't been able to fix that. I know. What if you just charged me a lot more money and made it quiet? Yeah. They're like, that would defeat the whole purpose. You're sorry. like, no, I'm not saying like a ton of money. $5,000. Will that fix right. the problem? Right. I understand this watch is $70. What if I gave you $270 for it? But would it's it be quieter. Quiet. This story is probably most well known, but I got a watch. I'm going to explore. I was very excited about it, drove to Canada for a big thing that I was doing, jumped in the water, watch immediately broke. And yeah. for the rest of that trip... Were you sick to your stomach? Well, the thing is it has the power reserve, I think, of 48 hours. Mm -hmm. So I had two days of knowing the watch was broken and everybody telling me it's not broken, it's still telling the right time. And I was like, no, but it is it broken. It is broken. It's like, listen, it sounded hear. terrible. And someone asked me yesterday at this event, does it feel less special? And I was like, to be honest, yeah. It doesn't feel like this beast of a watch that I have anymore because I broke it. Oh, I don't know. I, well, that's that's what we'll get into at the end. That yes. is the end answer. Yes. So, going from there. Well, your your watch, and we'll talk about that in a second, but yeah, yeah. that was a matter of it needing a service. Exactly. Whereas the other kind of points I want to drive home here are a little bit of even innocent misuse. Okay. My watch is also... A perfect example of the person that's selling it to me not not giving me the whole story. Right. Because when I brought it up to them, they got incredibly angry and defensive. Right. They were like, no, it's your fault. I had it checked. Relax. You right. know? I'll, exactly. I'll tell you the end how that worked out at the exactly. end. Exactly. Okay, first thing we should talk about is probably water resistance. Not only should you, you know, abide by the resistance that your, you know, watch is, is, is certified to, which is fairly easy say, to do. It's yeah. only not when it's a really, you know, shallow one, like a 30 meter, um, like my Piaget, which I went in the water with the other day, which I fell in and I was drunk. It is what it is. Really? Uh, it'll wait, be wait, wait. How is it? I haven't checked yet. I've been too scared. <laughs> oh. I'm too scared. Um, but th th that is carelessness, right? Yes. You certainly aren't doing it to be an asshole, but you're certainly being a little bit careless, and you exposed your watch to an undue amount of amount of water pressure. Like that's that's it. These watches are not sealed to be exposed to to, to water. Period. I, I will say though, you now have to sadly you have to check per your watch manufacturer. Yes. Omega now on their website says thirty meters meters means you can swim to thirty meters. Which I was like, oh, that's amazing. Wow. A guy recently uploaded a picture to Reddit. He, yeah, but 30 meters of, of pressure. They say, no, no, that's how far you can go. This has always confused me. Well, that's the, th that's the problem yeah. with taking care of your watch is like, it's confusing because we're trying to standardize it and the watch world is not. Right. So Omega's like, no, 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 your 30 meter watch, go to 30 meters. You wow. will be fine. But then other brands are like... But who goes further than 30 meters? <laughs> yeah, 30 meters is far, That's right? That's deep down. It's That's dark. deep. A meter is what? It's a yard. It's a little more than a yard, yeah. Okay, 30 yards down? <laughs> yeah. I mean, are you kidding? 90 feet? Yeah, right. I mean, that's well, Who far. even knows what's down there? How many inches is that? God. <laughs> <laughs> I say it, you're like, well, how many centimeters would that be? But to kind of add to that point, two stories that I really like or that I saw online that seem true... One is a guy forgot that he was wearing his Speedy when he went diving, mm. posted it on Reddit, Bad a news picture. Bears. Uh, what? Bad news bears. No, good news it bears. It was fine? Yeah, he posted a picture of the watch while he was diving. Wow. And people were like, that is the coolest picture I've ever seen. That is very cool. Speedy. It's certainly not something that I would do, I would have done, but nope. that's, that's interesting. I'm still but terrified. That being said, there are other chronographs like the Daytona or other screw down chronographs. Um, people, I've seen it, have forgotten to screw their chron chronographs down you know, properly. Same thing with their crowns. 
right? When you have a screw down crown or a screw down pusher, you have to remember to keep those screwed down. People, <laughs> but it's the whole point of uh, it was invented by Rolex, so you don't have to remember, and people still forget. And you still forget exactly. Yeah. Uh, people are timing with their pushers, or or I've seen it honestly more with women than I have with men, uh, where they'll set the time and then, then not properly secure the crown uh -huh. back in on Rolexes. I've seen it a thousand times, yeah. and I'm like, God forbid you expose that to water. I mean, that's good. the water's gonna rush right in. Mm. I mean, there's there's a crown gasket. There's nothing really there. Well, that's, that's what I was protect. gonna say. Because then other people are gonna be like, well, there is a crown gasket, and it's like, okay, but listen, yeah. there's there you are. Basically saying, I want to use the last line of yeah, possible defense exactly. instead of this robust no, system. No good at all. So water resistance is a big one. Another one uh, is an anecdote that I have about, about you know, spring like spring bars and pins. Um, yes, modern Rolex spring bars and pins are very strong, um, but particularly in the non-modern world, right? Like moving a little bit, you know, moving 10 years back, people are still wearing Rolexes and other models from a little further back. We have to be careful with the amount of pressure or or the, you know, or, or even worse, when people are doing spring bar replacements with strap changes, mm. you know, those cheap spring bars, those little thin, thin ones that you get are not good. You need the thicker spring bars. Pay a little bit more money. It's, they're not yes. expensive. Um, and, and buy spring bars that are more, or, you know, that are that are stronger, less, in, you know, more, more indestructible, you yeah, know? Yeah, yeah. Um, it is a shame, and I always get nervous when, when people go fishing, when you see like someone with an older watch on a boat. I'm like, if that spring bar pops, which could happen, there's a lot of You're pressure done. on fishing boats, right? Yeah, like yeah, everyone's yeah. knocking around and it's everywhere. You know, that watch is gone. Oh yeah, it's yeah. over. Good a little anecdote. We know someone that was at an event, and you know he was being an ass, <laughs> being an asshole. <laughs> yeah. But uh, you know, oh Rolex, oh GMT. They're made to be abused. It's a tool. Uh, you basically, here's how it would go. Hey man, really nice watch. It's a really beautiful watch. Thanks. And he, well, he would reply, it's just a Rolex sports oh. watch. <laughs> yeah. It's just a Rolex sports watch. Watch. Takes it off. Throws <laughs> it in the air. And then it would drop. And uh, and he thought that was the cutest party trick. It and fell It fell down a mountain and it, shattered. He just got to repair it. Exactly. He fell threw down it down a mountain. Down a mountain. Yeah. And it shattered. Idiot. And when we were there, this is on a basically a soft wood deck or hard wood deck. This uh, is also a, a, an event. There's some big players. It's an event. And the watch bracelet immediately falls apart. Not even, it like explodes. It explodes, off. right? In like two separate places, the watch bracelet just finally You have gave to find it. the spring bar. You have to find it's a ridiculous. piece. ridiculous. Oh. So, so I guess the, what's the takeaway there? One, don't be an asshole. Don't throw your watch in the sky. That's ridiculous, okay? <laughs> um, but B, um, these little pins and these little, you know, bars. They're strong, but you know, also be attentive. <laughs> yeah, right. You know, I've right. seen it even on my Rolex GMT, right, which is not stainless steel. You <laughs> know, the the the, 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 the 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 screw has come out a little bit. Well, if I neglect that, if I'm paying no attention, that screw is coming out a little bit every day for a month. Yeah. And then at one point, I go to do something. You tell me, oh, grab that. That that, that could one hundred percent just slip off my wrist. The point of failure that people think is usually the movement, and it's like, well, okay, sure, but also keep in mind that now these brands that are hundred, a hundred or hundreds of years old have really focused on the movement. Mm -hmm. But the bracelet is really still just screws. It's just screws, right? And, and yes, they're 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 strong and they're built to last. There's no question about it. But a little bit of care and attention is not going to hurt the watch. That's for sure. We okay. were at, and this is leather strap too. We were at a watch shoot, it's a pretty big shoot. I always have eyes on me while mm -hmm. we're filming. I am holding a watch that is upwards of $20,000 mm -hmm. with the brand reps who obviously don't wanna tell their boss that the guy's filming broke the watch. Mm -hmm. I pull it out, I look at it, immediately the leather tears off of the watch and the top part, the top strap stayed on, but I almost essentially just threw the watch on the ground. This does happen, right? I'll, I'll explain to you how the leather tears off of the watch, okay? Yeah. So it depends on the watch construction, okay? But usually there's an upper, right? And and a, and a, a lining, okay? That lining is less pretty. Sometimes it depends, I mean, I don't know. I don't know what it's always made out of. It just depends on the strap, sure, right? Sure. But what sometimes happens is when they're punching that hole or when they're, when they're uh, you know, inserting the spring bar, sometimes, I've seen it, the the spring bar will actually go in between the lining and the actual like upper, sure. right? Yep. And the upper, when it's swayed specifically, or even if it's leather and it's been around for a while, can, will, not can, will tear with time. 
One hundred percent. One hundred percent. And I've seen this a lot, and and I've seen it because you know, uh, uh, you know, people are always buying watches or buying straps, especially in like the vintage and pre-owned world, and always looking to play around and get something new and get something different. And that's all well and good. And God, we sell a ton of straps every month in the Fiona Harris leather strap shop, and that's that's great. Yeah. But we have taken such measures, such preventative measures, to make sure everything is safe, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Uh, not just beautiful, not just everlasting, but safe. Yeah. Okay, our straps come with quick release spring bars. That's just a start, right? Yeah. That, 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 that bar, not only touch it, it is made of like, it's unbelievably sturdy, it's crazy, yeah. um, but it's not going anywhere. It's literally embedded into the strap. Right, because, right. Because, you know, a strap is one thing and no one should buy one, but it's not that end of the, end of the world, you waste a hundred bucks, you move on. But if your strap actually rips or tears, you will, you can very well, not only shatter your crystal, but maul your case. It's a fucking disaster, yeah. you know? So water resistance, general attentiveness when it comes to screws. Um, what are the other things that well, we're talking here, about? The funniest thing is me falling victim to thinking a modern watch is perfect is when we were golfing that day and I was like, I'm just gonna wear my Zenith as I golf. Yeah. And you were like, absolutely do not wear your Zenith. Yeah, no, I, and, and listen, people people wear their watches to golf all the time, that, that does happen. Um, but I am a big advocate of, of uh, staying away from shock. Okay, when it, with your watches, um, you know, you see it on TV and that's all well and good. A lot of those guys are, you know, multi, multi-millionaires and they're being paid to wear their watches, right? Yeah. They're literally being paid to, doesn't matter, okay? But I will tell you, I have only ever broken, broken two watches in my life and they're both because of shock. Once I was playing baseball, last time I played baseball, I, you know, with a, with a, with a wooden bat, I just, I hit a, I hit a real good one yeah. and um, I didn't notice it until, I don't know, maybe I was on third base and, uh, <laughs> and, um, and that's not third, that's first base. Oh, I'm whatever. getting old. Hey, whatever your bases uh, are. Whatever your bases are. And, uh, and I was like, holy shit, that was shock, 100%. Yeah. And the second time, God, actually the second time was the first time, but I was Sounds funny, but I was chopping a tree, and uh, yeah, and I was chopping a tree, and it was a little bit late in the season. Not that I should have ever been doing it to begin with, with a watch on, but it was a little bit late in the season, so the tree had frozen a little bit, mm. and it was it was a bitch, and uh, and I and I broke my watch. Period. And I broke the watch, and I had to get a full service. It was a huge pain in the. Oh. It was, I don't remember exactly, it may have been a Hamilton. I, I, oh, okay, for some sure. reason it was a Hamilton in my mind. And, uh, and I broke it, you know, and I had to get a fix and service. It was a disaster. So shock is a big one. Magnetism is another big one, right? Google all the causes even now, of magnetism. Even now. I get it. You know, you, you, uh, it's hard to avoid it, right? Going through airports, going into, grabbing a tub of ice cream in your freezer has magnetism, right? Really? Uh, microwaves. Yes. All these things have magnetism. So it's hard to avoid that one. I'll give you a little bit of a pass on, obviously. Yeah. Uh, it's and not depending just, on the watch, you know, it's MRI becoming machines, you know, but <laughs> right. yeah, it's becoming hopefully less of a problem, but there's still a lot of watch brands and even you get a watch that's not spanking brand new where they're not that resistant to magnets yet. Exactly. Um, but the, the, the point here is, you know, I'm not saying baby your watch. God knows. I really, I don't feel that way at all. I just noticed I have a little scratch on this watch just before. And I said, no, that's my first scratch on this watch. I have one in the same spot, I think. That happens, yeah. right? Um, unless you swap mine now. <laughs> uh, that happens. Um, these watches are made to be worn. And they're made to be, you know, they're made to show signs of wear, right? Right. But... Let's be responsible owners. Let's be aware of the fact that even the most indestructible watches, right? Rolexes, the Oyster Perpetual, the Explorer, right? The watch that went to the summit of Mount Everest, they break, okay? Michael's yeah. broke. Mine broke. Yesterday talking, a guy's dial twisted and fell off his, yeah. his watch. I don't want to just start blasting brilliance, but people's glass has fallen off their watch. It's a mix of, at this price, watches are handmade. People make mistakes sometimes, so you have to make sure that your watch comes together correctly. Yeah. But it's also a mix of like watches since they're on our person and they're marketed specifically to be these super tough machines, you forget that they are also machines. Like yep. G-Wagon, perfect example. Yep. It's like, yes, you could drive that and off-road it yep. and you could be fine, but that doesn't mean you should just close your eyes and just fly down off-road. Exactly. You have to inspect your watch and make sure it's all right. I, I, absolutely. You know, one of the beautiful things about watches is even when you do break them, they're still relatively affordable to fix, which is good to keep in mind as well. You know, right. yeah. at the end of the day, you know, everything is repairable and, and it's all going to be okay. Uh, cars are a disaster. But, uh, but the point is, just be a little bit more careful, guys, right? Be a little bit more attentive. Be aware of the dangers and uh, and wear your watches. Wear them well. You yeah, know? And, we did uh, a... And, speaking of you following the pool with your Piaget... We did a shoot 
last time where a guy was wearing a watch and fell in the pool. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, no. And thankfully, the watch is water resistant. was 30 meters. Mm-hmm. But he fell in the pool swimming. I ran over to him and was like, oh, watch, 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 watch. Give me the watch. As he's like blowing bubbles underwater. And he just pulled it off and handed it to me. I let it dry and fine. Fine. So it's, it's not that they're incredibly delicate. Right. But... If you have a 30 meter watch and it, the brand is not saying, hey, 30 meters means 30 right. meters, don't wear it in the pool. Right. Agreed. Switch your watch before you're going to get drunk and die, die in the pool. Agreed. Well, that was a good episode. Michael, thank you so much. I uh, if you like watch content, subscribe to our channel for more. Uh, and if you want more than that, uh, sign up to our podcast, The Zero Weekly Podcast. And uh, if you do sign up, shoot me a DM over there so we can have a little chat. That's it. Boom.